I purchased the one-year-old Roscoe 8 off of pinkbike.com as a present for my son-in-law. I got a good price because the paint job was in really rough shape due to scuffing caused by a crappy bike rack. This video will take you through executing a custom paint job on this Roscoe. You'll learn about paint stripping, HVLP paint spraying, custom stencil creation and application, and clear coating. If you ever wanted to repaint a bike or do a custom bike build where you take ownership of the painting process, this video is for you. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with the paint removal. Um, I use this Rust-Oleum aircraft paint remover product. You put it on the bike frame and then you put saran wrap over it to kind of trap the vapors inside of it so it can work on the paint. You leave it on for about 45 minutes and then you scrape away. I use this plastic scraper uh, that I picked up at uh, AutoZone that worked pretty well. I have to wear gloves. So the regular nitro thin gloves just don't do the trick. So they, they, they basically melt. Following uh, the aircraft paint removal, then I went into wet sanding with 600 grit paper. Now I'm at the stage where I've just got a little bit of paint left in kind of the nooks and crannies of the frame. Okay, now I'm gonna mix up a um, solution of 50-50 vinegar and water and wipe down the frame and that will kill and that will get rid of any um, residual acid from the aircraft paint remover. What's great about this is when you're done, get a little olive oil and you can use the leftover stuff and make salad dressing. Put it away as Christmas presents. And mostly I'm trying to get into the little nooks and crannies. I'm using my rubber gloves again, not because this is going to burn, but because I don't want to stick like vinegar for the rest of the day. Alright, that's it on the rub down. Time to hose her off. With the frame prep complete, it was time to think about the painting process and the graphics I wanted on the bike. The bike is for my son-in-law who's presently attending Colorado University in Boulder, so I decided to do a paint theme inspired by CU. So a black base coat with a gold fade was the plan. Graphics were an important element of my design, so they would need to be sized appropriately to accentuate the gold fade. So the next thing I worked on were all the graphics. On a prior build, I purchased a bunch of vinyl decal stickers that I applied to the bike over the clear coat. For a first bike project, that was fine, but for this build, I wanted the graphics painted on the bike and preserved by the clear coat, so I'm definitely upping my game here. So I decided to make my own graphics from scratch. I did that using a Cricut Joy stencil maker, and this approach produced absolutely fantastic results. Here I'm experimenting with some ideas and laying them on the frame to help decide on letter width and height. There are tons of videos on using the Cricut Joy, so I'll move quickly through it. Cricut provides software that runs on your computing device, for example, your PC or your iPad, and their software has a canvas concept where you design your stencil. You can import images or text or, you know, type in the, the actual text that you want to have printed. You can rotate it. You can do it all, all kinds of stuff. Obviously, you can design your stencils from scratch as well. Once you have your design laid out on the canvas, you send it to the Cricut machine uh, via Bluetooth, and basically it's like a printer with a cutting blade. You then tell Cricut what kind of vinyl you're working with, and the machine takes it from there. For the stencils, I used Aura Mask 810S vinyl. This is designed for use with solvent-based paints. It's very good stuff. It's a little bit finicky, but all in all, it's definitely the way to go. So I cut my material, position it on the non-slip cutting mat, and then cut the stencils with the Cricut machine. Then you do a process called weeding, where you remove the part of the stencil where the spray paint will be applied, and you'll see this process um, shortly in the video. Now you have all your stencils. You lay them out on the frame and verify that you think you've got it. Put away your stencils and let's get on with the painting. Alright, today's a big day. Today we paint. So, um, the frame's ready. I just went, um, did a final sanding with 320 sandpaper, wet sandpaper, to give the primer something to grab onto. And we cleaned it off with this high-tech 
wipe out the surface prep. I'll then be applying the two-part epoxy. Um, I bought black epoxy because the base coat's going to be black. I thought that would be a, a, make it a little bit simpler for myself. And we've got our Valspar base coat black, which we'll be mixing in a one-to-one -one ratio with the reducer. And these um, colors here, we have gold and we have white, and these will be the second layer um, and I'll be using this for my masking. So, and then the final thing is we'll be clear coating and it's a four to one with the clear coat and the activator. So let me give you a quick tour of the paint booth and you can see how that's put together. So the paint booth is really pretty simple. It's an old soccer tent that the top was kind of beat up and I took the top off and here it is assembled in the garage and I bought two 10 by 20 foot one mil sheets of plastic um, one sheet goes all the way around two sides and you can't see where i'm pointing but trust me and the other sheet goes from one side to the bottom so we have and I, and i guess a, a third sheet which is the flooring so we're covered top and three sides of the box and we have an open area to the garage where i'll be you know exhausting the um, paint fumes out of the garage with a the big floor fan here. Okay, so let's get started. So this is a two-part epoxy and I have to break the uh, inside bladder with this guy. So shake it up good and then we'll get going on the painting. All right, I think I'm done. I think it can, I think the um, primer came out fine, but I don't have good enough light in here. When I'm on the back side of the bike, I can't see anything. So I, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna try to do something about the lighting. I may end up taking the, the little top off. For the base coat, I'm using a mini HVLP with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. I used a 1.4 nozzle on a prior project and it seemed to spray just too much paint with too large of a fan. The 0.8 nozzle seemed to work really quite well for for my skill level. Black base coat on a black primer, eh, it's not too dramatic, but it did come out quite well, so I was happy with that. The next step was to cut the transfer paper, apply it to the stencil, and then apply the stencils to the bike frame. Lining the stencils on the frame was really quite straightforward. Peeling off the transfer tape was simple, but getting the proper adhesion of the stencil to the bike frame really was a quite tricky. Um, the stencils barely adhered to the frame, and I don't know if that's by design or because of the humidity where I was operating or the age of the stencils. I'm not really sure. It's the first time I've ever worked with them. So I had to be super careful to make sure that the stencil lay perfectly flat and there were no bubbles along the edges of the stencil that would allow paint to creep under the stencil itself. In the final analysis it worked out fantastically, you know, much better than I expected, but it felt a little tricky and a little bit finicky throughout the process. But the results again were terrific. With the stencils in place, the next task to perform was to mask around the stencils. Okay, I've um, got my stencils applied. So I'll be doing a gold fade, uh, taking it from about here to about there. Never did that before, so that'll be an adventure. And these are stencils that use Aura Mask 810S. They're supposed to be good with solvent-based paint. And I got to tell you, it was a pain in the ass putting them on. They didn't really want to stick very well. And I'm hoping for the best with that. Having never done it, I'm not exactly sure what to expect. Big stencils, it seemed, seemed to work fine with. But if I did anything intricate, like my little Alien logo in the front, which you can't quite see, but when it's painted gold, you'll see it and believe up here, painted gold, you'll see it. So those are kind of intricate and man, hoping for the best with that. Run a light and then I like the back. I'm actually thinking I need to do this with the other gun.
real careful about back end when it goes down. I, I would not do that. Um, that's about All right, Christine, the big reveal. Oh, it came out great. <laughs> so now let's weed the stencil and get rid of the parts of the letters that don't belong. Maybe leaving it overnight was the right thing to do. No, it's just... It just works the way it's supposed to work, which I didn't, Trust. I was nervous about. It's a Roscoe Ace, a track Roscoe Ace. Yeah. So that's nice. It's a, it's a size 2XL, though. It's for my son-in-law, who's 6'8". So it's hard for him to get a bike that fits him. You look like you've done this before. No, it's the first time. Whatever. A lot of a lot of YouTube video watching though. So you did the black too? Yeah, I, I did the black this morning. So you mean to say you did this letters too? Yeah, with this same kind of stencil stuff. What color was the whole bike? The bike was gray, and I sanded it down to the aluminum. Was it gold? Was it the older one? No, it's uh, actually 2000. It's a 2019, but it was all it was all scratched up. Oh, okay. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. And every time he sees the bike, he's gonna stand up like this, like a man put up his belt and say, "I did that." <laughs> I signed it. It's got my signature on the back. See that bike right there? Yeah, yeah. I did that bike. He put his name on. I did that bike. It really does. Did you say that for your son-in-law? Yeah. So every time he does something wrong, be like, "Hey, remember, I did your bike." Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I can't say I don't like that. That's okay, though. I mean, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> I like it. I think it's cool. All right, this is where I this is where I messed up right uh, here. Okay. And I think it's coming out pretty good. It's a little hard to see, to be honest. Got two coats in. I don't know, I'm sure I've got my signature runs in there, but I think it's coming out pretty good, so... Okay, so the paint job's done. Um, I put five coats of clear on it, and I think that was the, was the right technique. And the very first coat, I kind of sprayed it on a little bit too thin. You know, there's a fine line between getting it at the right thickness and creating runs. I stepped over the line a couple of times, but um, I think it came out really, really good. I'm super happy with it. There's a couple of runs in the clear coat, but it's a mountain bike and that's, you know, it's gonna be riding it into boulders. I love the way the Track Roscoe 8 came out. Reswell, that's the last name of Andrew. It's the B Boulder, it's the uh, Colorado University after their color scheme where Andrew's going to graduate school. And we get the, uh, the famous Alien Believe logo on the front. That's kind of like my signature thing on these custom bikes that I've done, all two of them. I even signed this baby. So I'm super happy with the way this thing came out. So. Uh, tomorrow I'll take it out in the sunlight after it's had 24 hours to let the cure coat, the clear coat cure, and I'll let you see what it looks like in the sunlight. The paint job came out great. Let me first cover some lessons learned, and then I'll show you a bunch of still images of the final product. Frame prep. The paint stripping process is absolutely awful. The chemical stripper works fair. It's a lot of sanding. Don't try to knock it out in one day because you're hands are going to be shot from pressing with the sandpaper and you're going to be frustrated and it's just 
very long and tedious. So if you can spread it out over the course of a week, maybe have one big day on the weekend and then one or two hours a night for three or four nights and you'll, you'll knock it out and you'll have good results when you're done. On producing the stencils, that's a make versus buy decision. I try to buy them first. I can buy Trek stencils, but I can't buy custom stencils particularly easily. Uh, the other thing is, is all the Trek stencils that I could buy were not for using with solvent-based paint. They're more permanent stencils. So um, in the build versus buy, I ended up buying a Cricut Joy stencil maker. So I was hanging out in Joanne Fabrics with all the moms figuring it out. That worked out really, really well. So I bought Aura Mask 810S stencil vinyl material, which is a solvent-based paint-friendly vinyl. It's removable and it worked out really, really well. I did that for 90% of the stencils and I used the Cricut removable smart vinyl for my signature. The other thing with buying a stencil maker is I could make the stencils of all different sizes. So, you know, I went through two or three iterations on the various stencils to get it to a size that I liked. And had I been buying them, I would have been spending tons of money and months, you know, getting stuff shipped in only to find out that it was no good. So I think if you're going to do more than one project, having your own stencil maker is a great thing. The Cricut Joy costs 169 bucks. It was a great investment. It's the way to go. You know, the obvious thing, you have to have a mask. It has to fit well. That's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, this stuff is awful. You do not want to be breathing this. I mean, it is absolutely terrible. Lighting is so important. The next time I do this, I'm going to buy some of those those stanchion lights that you can pick up at Lowe's and I'll probably get four of them so I can really see. You have to be able to see really well and it's important because when you're laying the paint down, you don't know what you're doing unless you can really see it well. And it's so easy to do it too thin and have the paint um, basically drying as it's going to the surface and it produces like a almost like a sandpaper feeling paint level a paint surface and that's not what you want it needs to be a little bit more a little bit more liquid it has to flow a little bit and it's impossible to do that unless you can see really really well what goes along with that is you have to have really good ventilation particularly when you do the clear coat because when you're in there with the clear coat you've got this big cloud all around you and you know I wear glasses when I'm when I'm doing this kind of work I, you know I use it for reading but it's up close work I wear glasses and the lenses are getting caked with film and you just can't see. So you have to have super good ventilation to evacuate that um, paint cloud out of the room. My setup was okay. If I had two more fans, I think I would have had proper ventilation to just suck that cloud down to the ground and get it out of the, out of the painting area quickly. All right, let's talk about gun setup. The primer, I used a, a 2K rattle can technique. I used black primer and I was painting a black base coat. So the black primer worked out great. I'm happy with the 2K uh, primer. The rattle can is just fine. It took one can to uh, do the frame and it worked, out, it worked out just super. It was primer everywhere though. It's a very wide fan that it puts out. So there's primer on the little ceiling of my tent booth, on all the walls on the floor. It's just everywhere. Better ventilation to pull that stuff out of the air. It won't collect. The base coat I did with an H, I uh, applied with an HVLP mini gun. Now the mini gun that I have comes with a 0.8 nozzle and the paint recommends a 1.3 to 1.4 nozzle. It's just too much paint is what I experienced in the last paint job. The fan is needs to be wide and it's just a lot of paint. So. I use a 0.8 nozzle. I was really happy with the way it worked. I mean, you know, I'm not a professional, but for, you know, uh, from what I can tell, that's for me painting a bicycle, that's the way to go. So I was really happy with that. I used um, an airbrush to do some of the gold. You saw that. At first I thought I was gonna do an airbrush for the entire gold area, but that would have taken a week. I used the HVLP to do the bulk of it, and then I did the feathering with the airbrush i could do it kind of slowly and take my time i think it came out pretty good probably i'd give myself a b 
on the feathering. If I were really good at working the gun, I could have done it all with the HVLP gun, but I, you know, I don't have quite enough experience. The airbrush recommends that you use 30 pounds PSI. I kept it at 10, and I used exactly the same paint. I was very happy with that. It didn't apply it too quickly. I could control it. It worked out great. I used the airbrush to do all the stenciling, the Trek Roscoe 8, to do my signature area. The airbrush worked out really, really nicely. 10 PSI was perfect. To do the clear coat, I did use my bigger gun. You know, to be honest, I think the clear coat defines the success of the project. I mean, that's where it all comes together. So you could do a beautiful base coat and beautiful stenciling. And if you do a crap job on the base coat, it's a crap paint job. So I use the HVLP with a 1.4 nozzle, very wide spray, an enormous cloud of, of clear coat inside my little paint room. But I, I you know, I just think you, you've, you gotta get that right. So I was a little bit timid about trying the 0.8 nozzle and, and winging it, because again, that defines whether the job is any good. There's a fine line between just right and too thick. Too thick, you get a run. Just right, it's beautiful. Too thin is actually the worst of all because you get almost like a sandpaper finish. You know, you can feel it with your hand, you can see it visually. So you've got to put it on thick, it has to flow. I have a couple of signature runs. I could sand them out, I'm gonna leave them there. I think it's a little bit like facial scars. It adds character. So that's how I feel about runs, it adds character. Leave them in. Fixing mistakes. Mistakes are made through masking, number one. I made two masking errors. Um, so you have to really review your work after you've masked. I was able to sand out one of the masking areas. I, I, I took my you know wet dry sandpaper, I think it was 600 and I, and I did not wet it. And I very, very carefully, it was a small area, I was able to sand it out, it worked great. I had another area that required me to fix the paint and I actually thought I could fix it with a little bit of paint thinner. And I touched it with paint thinner and instantly I could say, oh my gosh, it's just dissolving everything I just did. So I did it in a very, very small area. I stopped immediately and it's like, okay, I can't use paint thinner. And then I said, all right, well, can I fix it with my touch-up brush? So I got my touch-up brush. I have a nice little artist brush. Very, very carefully, I could see instantly that the thinner in the paint was trying to dissolve not only the gold surface layer, but it was trying to get to the black. So it's like I stopped immediately and I, I just, I, I did put enough of the gold on that when it did dry and I um, clear coated over it, you, you couldn't, I mean, you know, unless you're inspecting with a magnifying glass, you're not going to find it. So it's a little bit like those facial scars, you know, a couple of little imperfections here and there is just fine. Okay, that's it on lessons learned. So the um, uh, bike is curing in the house. I'm gonna let it dry for a couple of weeks in the house and then we'll do the assembly. When it's all put together, I'll do my final little video segment and you can see the end result. All right, we'll talk to you in two weeks. Here's the final product after the bike's been reassembled. The paint job came out really, really nicely. I'm very proud of this job. I've done three custom paint jobs, and this is by far the best of the three. Frankly, I attribute that to the fact that I painted the bike in November, and in Florida, November is pretty much the lowest humidity of the entire year, and humidity makes such an impact. And here's Andrew uh, out in Colorado on the maiden voyage of the bike that took place um, around Christmas time. All right, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hope you learned something. Catch you on the next one.